Hello everyone and welcome back to another video review. Today we're taking a look at Transformers Studio Series number 73, Leader Class Grindor from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. So here we have Grindor, but first we're going to move him off to the side. Take a very quick look at the box. So here we have Grindor's great big Voyager, or excuse me, leader, leader sized box. Here we have Grindor right there on the front, looking very much like, uh, like Blackout because, well, I'm pretty sure this is um, actually blackout i don't i don't <laughs> i'm pretty sure that this is just stock footage uh, stock image of uh, blackout from the first movie but you know what they, they're basically the same model anyway with, with like no changes to very little changes so it doesn't really matter so as we can see he is the 73rd figure in this studio series sub theme there's the movies from transformers Revenge of the fallen septicon uh grindor he also comes with ravage we'll be talking about that a little bit for ages eight and up of course that's just suggestion they have to put that on there manufactured by hasbro it says transformers along the side we're just gonna scooch this up a little bit here it it's co-manufactured by takara tomi transformers generations then here we have Grindor's or Blackout's face, whoever you want to say it is. Uh, he's a leader class in several different languages. Over here, we have another look at Grindor slash Blackout. He is an authentic Transformer, and there's Ravage to remind you of that. And then here we have the back of the box and everything he does. So, of course, you know, big screen inspired, blah, blah, blah. He's actually got articulated hands this time around. Uh, it's from the forest fight, um, comes with a display, which is always welcome. There's Ravage, 46 steps. Uh, and of course, here's your short little bio. And then, uh, you know, don't eat the toy. That's uh, it's probably not good for your digestive system. And uh, that's pretty much it for the box. So we'll get right down to it. Here is Grindor, which, you know, as I've already kind of made mention of, is that he is just a slight recolor, slight remold and by slight, I mean ever so slightly, of Leader Class Blackout uh, from, gosh, I can't even remember when uh, when Blackout came out. It was like 2019 or something like that. It's been a while. So, so yeah, if, uh, if you've seen Blackout, then there should be not really any major surprises here. There's just a couple different decal differences here. A couple, so for instance, you know, it says Marines on the side, 53. Those weren't there on Blackout. He is, of course, missing the uh, 4500X tail number but uh other than that yeah it is pretty much straight up leader class blackout from a while ago so you're not really going to be seeing anything too different here uh biggest difference is really right here on the front because i've colored in this yellow bit around the windows and then there's just that little bit of gray along with the 53 and that's really basically pretty much it so um, still hollow, still a little bit hollow, as you can see, his legs are, or his feet rather, just kind of, just sticking right in there, and then a lot going on underneath, but, you know, I don't, I don't think that's a big, big issue. It's, a, it's a still a very, very good looking vehicle mode, very large, probably the largest Studio Series figure in terms of, uh, vehicle modes, as far as I'm aware, in terms of the one, in terms of the figures I have, I don't know, Jetfire might give him a run for his money, considering he's Jetfire and he's a Blackbird, but, you know, for, in terms of what I've got, I mean, this is, this pretty much takes the cake in terms of sheer size because of how long he is, so, yeah, I guess the, the one little thing to get to is that, you know, we do have Ravage that comes with, and he does just kind of, like Scorponok, he does just kind of peg in underneath here somewhere actually you know what i'm not <laughs> i've forgotten how ravage pegs in okay here we go he's got that little circle right there and then there is a uh... hold on i have to raise the camera for this because the rotors there we go and then in here there is a little peg right there so ravage will just we'll just move his oh and okay his, his legs popped off. I've broken the kitty cat. There we go. Just get him all situated. Well, actually, that may be as much as I need to do. I don't know. You know, and in all honesty, I haven't actually put Ravage in here before. So, I don't know how well this is going to... Oh, nope. There we go. I think I got him. Nope, I didn't. Okay, so I am going to have to move the legs. Blech. Oh, okay, there we go. A little, 
a little hard to move them if they felt stiff. I was about to question whether or not they moved at all, but yeah, there we go. There we go. He's, okay, I can feel him in there, but he's not wanting to stick. I don't think he goes this way. Okay, well, so he's, so this is definitely where he's supposed to attach, but it's, he's not really wanting to stay. At, oh, there we go. I got him. There we go. So yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't even think he's supposed to be pointing in this direction. I think he's supposed to be going the other way, but that's how I was able to get him. Oh, and he popped out. So it's like, there you go. <laughs> that's how Ravage works. So we'll come back to him a little bit later. We'll go ahead and get into some quick size comparisons here. The most obvious one. Oh, hey, look, it's blackout. <laughs> lower that real quick so here we have movie one movie two blackout grind door um yeah pretty much exactly the same like i said uh blackout <sighs> blackout in terms of coloring i think he's like a very 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 slighter shade of blue where grind door is actually more of a grayish gray instead of the bluish gray i'm not sure how well that's coming off on camera because I, I can tell the difference just looking through it right now when, you know, when I get this all rendered out and stuff. I don't know how how much that's going to come across. And my nose is burning up right now. Ow, ow, ow. What is that? That was weird. Oh, my eyes are watering. Okay, well, we're just going to mush on through it. <laughs> mush on through the pain. So just a little comparison there. And it's, you know, as you can see, the Marines thing isn't on the side. On his tail, he does have blackout written over here where Grindor does not have that. Um, you know, th this little bit is kind of a colored in a copper color right there where that does not have that. Um, the Decepticon symbols are in different places on Blackout. It's right here along with the 4500X on Grindor. It's down here. Um, this little thing has a little red thing on it. The bulb is colored in white over here where over on Grindor it is not. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's basically the, the same figure except for the some of those small little changes. But I mean, hey, they, they do look good together. So I mean, you know, if you wanna, if you want a little fleet of, uh, of helicopters, then these are, these are two, two good toys to, to get. So they do kind of have some of the same issues when it comes to the transformation. Cause like these, these just don't really, in my experience, don't really stick together very well. And same with these panels here. It's like that they stick together better on blackout on grind or they're a little looser. Because you can see, I'm trying to, yeah, they just don't really click in very well. So there's not, so that's definitely not really a big difference between the two of them. And then just for funsies here, here we have Fast Action Battlers Grindor from 2009. So, yeah, he's a, he's a real little guy comparatively. So... So he's he's also he's also very chunky compared to a it's a big boy grindor over here. But I mean, hey, what what are you gonna do? I mean, this this is a this is a toy meant for like five year olds. So it's like yeah, but it's it's, it's fun. I I you know I really really enjoyed the fast action battlers for what they were trying to do back in the day. I think they pulled off what they were trying to do rather well, being kind of these smaller, um, easier to transform toys for younger kids. And even though I was one of the older kids and I could handle, you know, larger toys like this back in the day when the movies were coming out. I still, I still appreciated these guys and I did get a couple of them. So, so yeah, it, he's cute. Also a lot of extra little decals on here. Like he's got some Autobot kill counts on his, uh, on his nose there, as you can see. And then he does have a missile that go, that's go, supposed to go in there and you press that and the missile fires, but, uh, I lost that like a long time ago. So not surprising really considering the age of the toy, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the vehicle mode. Now we'll go ahead and get into the robot mode. And so as I'm going to be repeating here quite a bit, uh, if you've messed around with Blackout any and uh, you're thinking about getting Grindor, you know, you're gonna be seeing some familiar stuff here. So we'll just go ahead and come back here and untab these pieces first. This will get the legs kind of disassembled. Now, I will say that in my experience with Grindor so far, compared to Blackout, he does not tab in quite as well as Blackout does in like these back sections here. So I was, you know, I was, I had to wrestle with him a little bit to get him into vehicle mode. But you know, when I finally got him in there, things stuck in as I was messing around with him there. But 
these these tabs do do uh, come undone a lot easier than on blackout, which is a little annoying. I will I will say, but you know it's not really that big. A deal i don't think because oh, i've also seen based on my research we'll just go ahead and pop this out here fold that down and move it out of the way i have seen in my in my research on this figure that certain copies of this guy do uh, have looser connections in in the tabs than uh, than others so i think i've just gotten one of those loose copies so i mean that eh, not really much you can do about that that it, it is what it is so so we'll just go ahead and Bring down this whole torso section here. He says, as he realizes, you cannot see me bringing down the torso section. We'll just go ahead and move this up because I feel like <laughs> this is this guy's big enough. You he, he kind of requires the camera moving up. So, so the arms here, we'll move that up, and that'll give us clearance to move the torso down. Maybe if it wants to let us. There we go. And then we're gonna shift the legs down like that, and then that just kind of gives us clearance to get some things out of the way. Now we'll go ahead and focus on the backpack here for a second. This piece here folds in like so, and then this is one of the one of the tricky bits is that this folds in and then that goes up like there. Oh, okay, not not that tricky. I, when I got him out of the box, this was this was tricky. But now that I messed him a little bit, it must be a little a little better. So, ah. just go ahead and move up here. Move these forward a bit, and get these up and out of the way if this side wants to go there we are now i will say one improvement from blackout to grind door is that these seem to stick in at least on my copy these seem to stick in a little better because on on my blackout this piece right here just like snaps on and off all the time so uh so far this a lot more snug i appreciate that so take these panels here move them down and then that's going to give us clearance to move this up a little bit and now we can kind of start working on torso just shove all that up there's the head this all just folds in like so very neat very tidy i love this mold so much and then hey there's a uh, grind door's beautiful beautiful ugly head so with that in place we'll go ahead and move this whole assembly up and kind of get it going here and then with all that done, we can tab in the legs to the torso. And then with that done, we can get this tabbed in to his backside. If things want to cooperate with me here, come on. Okay, I need to get some things. Things are getting stuck. I gotta get those moved up, give things clearance. Arms are getting tired. All right, there we go. Now that's shoved up enough, so that just tabs in right back there. That just kind of rests there, and then you can kind of see. <laughs> it looks a little awkward, awkward so far, but we're, we're working on it. And then those will just fold like that. Now we can go ahead and work on the legs. We'll start with the feet here. So that, whoop. <laughs> See, as you as you can tell, he is a little looser than than Blackout because he, he the way he just shifts around. So this will move that over here. This will untab here and just move around like that. Also, probably good to flip up those landing gear, and then that will just tab in right there. And we have a foot done, maybe. Twist the leg, bring the foot down, and that kind of just auto kind of does that on its own. Come on. Yeah, it tabbed in there nice and good. There we are. So same thing over here. Go ahead and untab. There we go. Untab that. Just push that down. Bring up the landing gear. Swing that around. 
push it back in. Just twist the leg, there we are. And then, oop, that came down. And then we kind of have him able to stand at, the, at this point. A little, little awkward, but we're getting there. I'll go ahead and bring this down. Okay, let's see here. Let's go ahead and take care of these rotors since they're kind of getting in the way. I gotta, I gotta figure out where the split point is. I'm not, because uh, since it can turn, <laughs> Oh, I've just removed the entire thing now. Great. Come on, where are you? Okay, here we are. There's the split point. There we are. All right, that's folded in half. That came untabbed, so let's get that tabbed back in. All right, tabbed back in, moved up, and then we kind of got that all situated like that. So now the only thing left to worry about are the arms. So as you can see, there's a seam right here. That's a connection point. We'll just split that down the middle and that brings the arms in. Fold that in right there. The hands are down here. So we'll just flip them out, flip this down, flip that down. And then because the hands are articulated now, we can just move that out like so and then bring this in right here. And then where is the, all right, and then that will just tab in right there to keep those pieces secure. And then same thing over here. Split that in half. Arm up, that down. Tab it in such. Move this over here. Probably want to move that down first. There's the click. I was, I was, I was expecting there to be a click on the other side, but it just never happened. But now we got the click over here. And then if the hand wants to work with me here, there we are. Now we'll just get him standing in a good position and get the rotors there we are and then here we have grind door in and so here we have grind door looking very big and very mean we'll just go ahead and get a good look at his face sculpt here it's a very very ugly ugly face but beautifully molded this is the reason this mold is one of my favorite molds in studio series just because how good it looks overall i mean this I, i've said it, i said it with blackout but when i reviewed him a couple years ago but i'll say it again with grindor is that this is just you know like a as almost as perfect a figure as you can get in terms of the translation from screen to toy because i mean obviously there's things here that make it look like a toy but i mean there's so much detailing work done here to make it look as close to the character model that's in the film as possible and i just i i just love it because i mean the the backpack is nice and clean it's like the tough on the 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 yeah. <laughs> that stuff on top that's what i was trying to say the stuff on top is you know it's it's it looks like it's just a whole bunch of stuff piled up on the top of his shoulders but that's the way it looks in the film so i mean that's that's accurate um so yeah, he just he just looks really really good, and of course he's got a couple changes from Blackout here. Is uh, notably, I don't know what you want to call this because I think depending on there's a couple different things you could call it. I'm kind of more inclined to call this like rust or something like like that. So that he's got these little brown streaks everywhere and stuff like that. And you know, since he's a bad guy, Decepticon, so you make some look angry or something. I, I I think I like to call it rust. However, since this is in the, uh, you know, the, the forest battle scene, I think you could easily call this dirt or like tree sap or something if you wanted to. I'm just going to go with rust, but uh, you know, it's like, depending on what you want to go with, you can definitely call it whatever you want. And I, I do really like that being on there to help 
differentiate him from from blackout and make him look a little meaner and of course he does have his opposable hands look at that it's like the fingers move in and out and then you can position them how how you want them so very very much appreciated and yeah like like on blackout that does come untabbed pretty often when you're messing with him which is annoying but not a huge deal so we can of course give him his weapon here or accessory way i mean because i mean it's Suppose I'm pretty sure that you know this is acting as the buzz saw uh, blade that that Blackout had in the first movie, which is why Grindor has it because this is basically the same toy with some slightly different tweaks to it, as I've said multiple times now. So of course he's got the same thing over. If I can actually hit it with my finger, there we go. So he's got the same thing over here. Um, I do wish that they had taken just slight extra step and you like made this like a flail or something where you could like move it in half and then like he could he could hold it in both his hands or something because when Optimus gets thrown in that one I want to call it iconic shot in the in the it's a it's a very memorable shot in the movie when I when Optimus gets thrown across the uh you know across the the forest and you know he lands on the ground and there's a three Decepticon stalking towards him you can see Grindor in the background kind of flipping around you know, flipping around some rotors like it's a whoop, and I just knocked him over. <laughs> you can see him moving, you know, moving the rotors around as if they're like a little flail or something. So if they, if it would have been nice for them to like, you know, do a little something different with his, uh, with his accessory to make it just that much more accurate to the film. But I mean, you know, based on what we got here, I'm not, that's not a, that's not a complaint. That's just a, ah, it would have been cool, but it's not a, it's not a big deal that they uh, didn't do that, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not upset. So I don't. Maybe that's something that they'll do with uh, the masterpiece blackout. So that could be, you know, grind or for if you wanted it to. Considering that, uh, you know, they use a lot of. Oh, his foot came undone. Great. Uh, since they use a lot of this figure in. And masterpiece blackout by the by the looks of things so so yeah i mean that just speaks more to how good this mold is is that is that the masterpiece version is basically using this as a as a template with some more tweaks since it's larger and more expensive so great now he's all kind of unstable since i knocked him over come on stand up there we go all right i think i got him now so yeah there is Grindor. So we'll go ahead and just scooch him over a touch there and bring in his direct comparison blackout. So two very mean looking Decepticons here and I love seeing them next to each other because I I just really like this design overall for the for the for these uh, characters here. I think it's just a, a really really cool design and so yeah yeah i mean again i'm not sure how well it's coming off on camera but with them next to each other blackout is definitely more of a gray or gray and blackout or grind yeah i said i said that right grindor is a bit more of a gray or gray and then blackout has just a slight more blue hue to him again it's 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 still a very very close close between the two of them but grindor is just a little bit extra more um gray and black has a little bit more blue i think again i'm not sure how well that's coming across on camera but there is slight color differences between the two of them which is appreciated i i, I think anyway just so that way they're not exactly exactly the same and of course you know different different hands here because these don't really these these uh the fingers don't move and then you can't turn them to the turn them to the sides so of course that's a Excuse me, so that's a nice upgrade. And then just for funsies here, we'll also bring in the Fast Action Battlers groin door. Again, just to see him in the middle of these two. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get him moved out of the way, but we're not done yet because just for funsies, what we'll also do is we'll bring in the whole forest fight crowd. So here we have Revenge of the Fallen Voyager, Starscream. 
Revenge of the Fallen Voyager Megatron. And then Hunt for the Decepticons Battle Blades Optimus. So we got the whole forest fight crew here. Here's how they stack up together. So not quite in scale as, as things should be considering these are like three different toy lines being represented here because Revenge of the Fallen, Revenge of the Fallen, Hunt for the Decepticons Studio Series. But I mean, hey, you know, they, I think they all look good together. You could definitely see someone recreating the, uh, the forest battle scene with these four. So we'll just go ahead and move them out of the way before Optimus gives Grindor a headache. And then just because he's included here, there's Ravage next to him. Because I guess they felt that since Blackout came with Scorponok, Grindor needed to come with someone and they decided to give him Ravage for whatever strange reason, even though they weren't on screen together ever. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's uh, it's nice that they did that, but I, it would have made more sense for Ravage to come with uh, Soundwave, with the uh, Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe Soundwave. And speaking of, we'll go ahead and move Grindor off to the side here. And then we will bring in Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe Class Soundwave. There he is with Ravage. And then we'll bring in Studio Series Darker of the Moon Deluxe Soundwave. So, yay, Soundwave's got all his little pets. Look at that. So, and yes, this is how I have them displayed on my on my shelf with Soundwave and his his little pets so move them off to the side and that's pretty much it for the toys here so we'll go ahead and get to the packaging oh my already it's got dust on it haven't had it that long and already it's got dust on it so of course included with every studio series figure you get the removable backdrop if it wants to come out of the box. I always have an issue with getting it out of the box. Come on. There we are. So here we have our display base. A nice great big forest fight here. I think this is the the largest display base they've done for the forest fight considering it's Grindor. So we'll just take him here and we can plop him right up there. And so if you have room for it on your shelf, and if you want to, there is a display for you to put your figure on. As always, I don't have room for a display base on my shelves, but it is nice that they give you the option. And yeah, it's cool to see Grindor in his, uh, in his final moments here before his face is ripped in half. So yeah, that'll pretty much do it. So that is leader class Grindor, um, I mean, he's pretty much blackout with a couple extra tweaks and additions to him. And, uh, of course, Ravage comes with. So, I mean, I don't really have many complaints here. Uh, I think he looks really good. You know, the, the addition of the hands with the opposable fingers there is really, really nice. I super appreciate that. And, uh, you know, there's just, he just looks like the 1% more meaner than Blackout already, already did. So, I think this is a... Uh, a good addition to studio series and a good duplicate to have i you know I'm, I'm honestly surprised that with the exception of like bumblebee um they haven't done more duplicates like this considering how many <laughs> how many different you know forms the different characters took it's like why have we not had a deep desert brawl from dark of the moon yet i mean they could totally do that considering he was it's i think it's justifiable you can see him in that one shot in dark of the moon he's in the background it's brawl and he's tan so do it, Hasbro. I'd buy that again in a heartbeat. And you know, it's like, why do we not have what? And and you know, even more on that matter, why do we not have a Dark of the Moon Ironhide? Just, you know, give him the heavy iron cannons instead of his movie one and two cannons. So it's like, let's 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 do that. You, know, you could do that with several more characters. So it's like, but I mean, you know, we haven't. There's still other characters they haven't gotten to yet. So I mean, never say never. I wouldn't be surprised if we get some of those eventually. So. Yeah, I would definitely recommend this figure, especially if you missed out on Blackout the first time around. So this is a, honestly, as, you know, Blackout's good. I'm glad I have both of them. But if I had to have one or the other, Grindor is probably the one I would go with just for the, 
just for the, you know, little additions. So it's nice to have Blackout and Scorponok, but this is this is probably the better figure just because of the little tweaks that they made to the mold. So yeah, that'll pretty much be it for this review. So please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are in the description below, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.